We have more information about the new bamboo machine. So this image popped up recently and the internet is on fire. By the internet, I mean 3D printing nerds and on fire may be a little bit of an overstatement. But there's new information. Let's dive in and see what it's all about. By the time I post this, there'll no doubt be loads of other creators making content about this as well. There's already stuff popping up. And I'll link the one that brought this to my attention because this is all news to me too. But be sure to dig in because there's gonna be no shortage of content. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is the entirety of the leak. This picture shows a lot, but also not very much at the same time. But there's certainly some juice to squeeze. For starters, we see confirmation of something that we've suspected for a long time. There's two nozzles. One of them's parked out of the way, and the other one's extended and printing. Also, we see a confirmation in the form of the name. H2D is displayed at the top right of the machine, confirming that much at least. Now, as we move towards the build plate, we can just make out what appears to be the build volume, or at least the build plate size. 340 by 320 by 325 by the looks of it, which is mm, a little bit odd. But this is answering the community's request, their plead for a larger bamboo machine. You like that? Yeah, you like that. Now if we look up top, we see an upgraded AMS with an HT at the end, as well as a screen that's got some numbers on it. Then just in front of that, there appears to be some piece of equipment or a module of some description. Could be a laser, could be unrelated, who knows? And finally, as some have pointed out, there looks to have been some reworking of the fans and venting on the inside of the machine. So that's the quick rundown, but let's see if we can dive a little bit deeper into what's going on here. The dual nozzles. That's what we were hoping for, and if this is anything to go off of, that's what we're getting. But if we look at the diagrams from the patent leaks that I discussed in my previous video about this a few months back, it's not exactly the same thing as what the leaks might have suggested, or at least not the same implementation. So that diagram kind of depicted a pivoting tool head setup to park one nozzle out of the way while one's in service, and then move the other one back in and park the other one. That's not exactly what the setup is here according to this picture. Although it could be, and maybe I'm just not seeing that mechanism because it is one picture we're looking at, but by the looks of it, it seems as though Bamboo's taking a more traditional approach to the dual nozzle setup. For example, Snapmaker and Ultimaker have had machines doing this dual nozzle thing for quite a while, and it looks pretty similar to what we're seeing here. So nothing groundbreaking, but if they can implement it well and make it user-friendly like Bamboo typically does, then this is gonna be like a wild success. Now another diagram we were covering in my last video was the filament buffer, or a filament buffer. So the buffer in the diagram has provision for two filament filament outputs and still the four filament inputs like we're used to. So I'll be interested to see if this is still being implemented or if they've changed that up as well. There's still a lot we don't know. This is early days, okay friends? But as your foremost bamboo speculator, I'll hop on the hype train with you. Let's go. Either way, a dual nozzle setup definitely has the potential to save on waste. But I'm not certain how bamboo is going to run it if it is this dual nozzle thing and that filament buffer we see from the diagram. If you're doing a simple two color print, yes, two nozzles is totally going to take care of the waste. It's going to be significantly lower, like zero. But what if there's still like four or eight or 16 colors going into the same print? What advantage does a second nozzle really add in those cases? If we do have two outputs on our filament buffer, we could potentially have one line in use and the other one being prepared while that one's printing, as long as both of those outputs can be primed without interfering and crossing paths. And that would save a lot of time if we were doing like a four color, multicolor print for sure, because the nozzle can be printing on this side and priming on the other side, so you don't have to wait for the color to be changed and retracted. But ultimately, the colors are gonna be sharing a common nozzle and there's gonna be a need for a purge. There's only two nozzles and four colors in this example. I don't know though. I'm excited about this machine and I'm sure Bamboo has some kind of solution. Now on to that big build volume, baby. Yes, it's finally come. The worst kept secret in all of the 3D printing community. Bamboo is giving us a big printer. The dimensions of 340 by 320 by 325 seem kind of odd, but if you think about it a little bit more, it kind of becomes clear what they're probably trying to do. So looking at the nozzle setup, they're right next to each other. The two of them are maybe 
5 to 15 millimeters apart, judging by the picture. There may be further or closer, um, I can't tell because I'm looking at a picture and I'm American so I don't know how to metric. But my point is, the center of the tool head and the center of the nozzle are no longer common to each other. That means the X axis or the X volume probably needs to be a little bit wider, maybe 5 to 15 millimeters wider. Huh? Huh? I'd say this design's likely to accommodate the new setup with the tool head. And on top of that, I would assume that the whole build volume of 340 isn't going to be accessible by both nozzles on the tool head, but I could be wrong. But I'm thinking that the actual printable volume is not going to be 340 wide. I think on the x-axis, it's probably going to be around 320. So for all intents and purposes, I'm treating this machine as if it's a 320 cubed machine. Not quite as big as the Creality K2 at 350 mil, but bigger than most people need for average printing. But this isn't about what most people need. I'm American, remember? It's about what I want. And what I want is to print the biggest things out of the highest temperature materials, the fastest speeds possible, even if my pieces are only gonna sit inside on a table in a climate controlled house. As for the other two dimensions, the Y and the Z, they don't really stand out in any significant way. It just kind of suggests that this printer is going to be big, and that's what we want. So that's cool. Moving right along to the revised AMS. In this picture, we see what we can only assume is an AMS sitting on top of the printer. It's got a screen that displays temperature as well as percentage. I'm guessing that parts the relative humidity inside of the AMS. And that's something that we see from the CFS with Creality and it's a great feature. But also on the right hand side of the screen, there's a bunch of zeros. If you ask me, those zeros look like some kind of timer. What would an AMS need a timer for? A filament dryer, I'm glad you asked. Again, Bamboo's not first to this feature either. Anycubic offers the Ace, which has a filament dryer built in as well, and that is the single greatest feature in all of the Anycubic ecosystem. Fight me in the comments. So if that's actually what's happening on this new AMS, good job Bamboo. You're doing something that's expected of you. The community thanks you. But there's a little bit more to unpack in this revised AMS. If you look at the bottom right of the machine, you see MS and then HT. Now I'm assuming the MS is the part of AMS that we can see, but what does that HT mean? If this is an AMS HT, it could mean a couple of different things. For one, there could be a couple of different levels of AMS now. Your standard AMS and your AMS HT. But more importantly, if this HT AMS has a filament dryer like we're assuming that it's going to, could that HT mean high temp? As in this machine? can dry your high temp materials? If so, that's excellent news because when I was adding poly dryers to my AMSs, I was legitimately worried about the high temperatures frying the electronics inside of the AMS housing. Luckily, I haven't had any issues, but the thought process still stands. So potentially, we're looking at a high temp filament dryer that's feeding this brand new machine. That's my hope anyway. Who knows? It's all speculation, nothing certain. I just want to share all of my excitement for all the other fanboys that have nothing better to do than watch speculation videos on YouTube. I got you. Now let's talk about that thing on top of the machine. Now if you're familiar with laser modules or CNC machines, you're probably going to see this picture and call that thing out as a laser module. As much as that could be the case, it could also just be a random piece of equipment that was set on top of the machine. This whole leak could just be some carefully orchestrated publicity stunt. Trying to drum up hype. That piece could be there to throw us off. If that's the case, I'm happily playing into Bamboo's hand like the predictable sheep that I am. But let's say for a second that that is a laser module. Have a look at that tool head. It does look like there's some kind of mounting system present for something like an attachment, like a laser module. That could be where you put the thing so you can engrave stuff as well. This could also just be another part of the tool head that doesn't have its faceplate on it yet. Again, we don't know. But have a look at the sides of the machine as well. What do you notice about the glass? It's tinted green. If you know anything about lasers, they can freaking blind you, dude. But if you've got tinted glass to look through, that's tinted to the correct wavelength, boom. No more blindness. So yeah, that very well could be a laser up there. But if that's the case, it's not really something that I care about. Even still, the community as a whole cares a bunch about lasers, I know that. So if it is a laser, I know there's a lot of individuals in the community that are gonna very seriously look at this machine. And that said, I'll probably turn into a laser person if that is what this machine does. Because if anybody can make that portion of the hobby accessible, 
it's bamboo. We've gotten to play with lasers on this channel before. The Algo laser kit that we played with a while back actually worked pretty well. It was a kit that we could put together and get running with reasonable results, despite our lack of knowing anything about lasers. So if bamboo gets in the laser game and makes engraving accessible, it's game over. They win. They'll be so unstoppable, I might actually get into lasers. Also, Paul loves lasers, so I'm sure he'll really appreciate this feature as well. Wait, what'd you just say? Now, I know this is a lot of information to squeeze out of one picture, but we're getting there. Stay with me. I promise we're almost done. If you have a look inside of the machine on the sides, there's a few things that we can gather. So on the left-hand side, we see a part cooling fan. It blows air towards the nozzles to help the part cooling fans on the tool head cool the part. This isn't anything new. We see it all the time. And I am interested to see if they've also got one on the right-hand side of the machine that we can't see to kind of even it out. But toward the back, we also see some other vents and stuff happening. Now, it's pretty standard these days for a machine to come with a heated chamber. Traditionally, a machine that was enclosed uses the heat from the heat bed to heat up the enclosure, allowing you to print materials that require a heated chamber such as ASA or ABS. So having a dedicated chamber heater, super convenient. Now it's also becoming more common for machines to have temperature controlled chambers. Right, so heating when you need to print ABS, for example, but also cooling or just general temperature control when you're printing something like PLA or PETG, that'll clog up if the chamber temperatures get too high. I'm pretty sure the heated chamber is a given at this point. This machine has got to have it. We'll see about the temperature control in general, but the other thing we can see from the back of the machine is some vents. But what if we were to look at these vents as less ventilation and more exhaust? Like yeah, printers have exhaust fans that filter out the air from the VOCs when you're printing nasty plastic. I get that. But Nasty plastics aren't the only things that need exhaust. Lasers also need exhaust. So perhaps this is indicating as well that the machine's gonna have a laser module. In my opinion, the most annoying part about laser engravers is the fact that you need such good ventilation in order to run them. Like I'd have to put it in my garage instead of having it in here on the bench. So maybe Bamboo's come up with a clean, elegant solution to this problem as well. Finally, H2D. That's the name. This was speculated and now it's been confirmed. I mean, it's confirmed as much as one single leaked photo can be confirmation of anything. But here we are, that's the printer's name. So I guess the D's like for dual, cause it's got dual nozzles, but it could also be using the two to notate. There's two nozzles. It'll certainly be interesting to see what else comes up if there's any other leaks leading up to the launch of this machine. I'm interested to see what I'm wrong about and how quickly this video becomes outdated. Let me know in the comments what you think about this single picture and join me on the overhyped nonsense train. Bye.